Hey people, what's happening? I thought maybe to do a couple more of movie collection analysis for the time being and see how it goes. Hoping it goes well as I love talking about films. And I started off with Jurassic Park Trilogy, based off all seven Potter books written by J.K. Rowling, which I can imagine it's going to be a long video. So, grab yourselves a cushion, grab yourselves a beverage, and some, uh, well, popcorn or crisps or takeaway or... Anything like that? Let's start with the first one, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So back in 1997, David Heyman, the producer, wanted to adapt the children's book to a film. So he thought of the auger downstairs, but his plans fall through, so a staff in Heyday film suggested Harry Potter starting with Philosopher's Stone, or Americans call it Sorcerer's Stone. And his assistants loved the idea, and in 1999, J.K. Rowling sold the rights to Warner Bros. Steven Spielberg got offered to direct the film but turned it down, although he said he would have liked making an animated film with an American actor, Haley Joel Osmond to voice Harry, or film taking elements from books as well. Spielberg thought it was like shooting ducks in a barrel. It's just a slam dunk. It's just like withdrawing a billion dollars and putting it into your personal bank account. And there's no challenge. So he then chose to direct AI, artificial intelligence, instead. As he left, there were choices of selecting directors such as Chris Columbus, Terry Gilliam, Jonathan Demmer, Mike Newell, Alan Parker, Wolfgang Peterson, Rob Rina, Ivan Reitman, Tim Robbins, Brad Sibling, M. Night Shyamalan, and Peter Weir. J.K. Rowling chose Terry Gilliam, but Warner Bros. picked Chris Columbus after seeing his work on first two Home Alone films and Mrs. Doubtfire. Chris got persuaded by his daughter to read the first three Harry Potter books, and he became a fan of them. So he got into meeting with Warner Bros. during two weeks of waiting. Columbus wrote a 130-page director's version of the screenplay to explain his vision for the film's tone, showing the script he has vision of the film. Taking inspiration from 1940s Great Expectations and Oliver Twist, such as Muggle scenes to be a bleak and dreary and Whistling World to be stepped in colour, mood and detail, he also wishes to use that part of darkness the sort of edge, that quality to the cinematography, taking colour inspiration from Oliver and The Godfather. Steve Cloves got picked as a screenplay and thought it would be hard to do, but as he read Harry Potter book, he became the fan of the series and wanting to keep it British and the characters stay true to the books. He was nervous to meet J.K. Rowland because he said she was really ready to hate him, but turned out okay in the end. Harry Potter, The Boy Who Lived, is played by Daniel Radcliffe, who survived the killing curse from Voldemort just after his parents were killed, so he lives with the Dursleys in Privet Drive. Harry wasn't fairly treated by them, so he eventually became a wizard student for Hogwarts. Daniel Radcliffe was found by David Heyman, the producer, and Steve Close, the screenwriter, in the theatre as they're watching Stones in His Pockets. They describe Dan as curious and funny and so energetic, there was really generosity too, and sweetness, but at the same time he was really voracious and with hunger for knowledge of whatever kind. He did act it before Harry Potter. He was in David Copperfield and The Tale of Panama. His parents wouldn't allow him to take the part at first because they thought it was film seven films in America, which was too big for him. It turned out to be London, so they allow him to audition, and Roland said they couldn't find a better actor, which I admit, I think Daniel Radcliffe is perfect as Harry Potter. Rupert Grint and Emma Watson never acted on screen before Harry Potter. They did it on plays as they got screen tested with Daniel Radcliffe. It's like they're best friends already. Rupert Grint played Ron Weasley, who's Harry's best friend. Thomas Brody Sangster was considered for the role. Emma Watson played Hermione Granger who's best friends with Harry and Ron. And I love these three, they're, they're perfect with their roles and chemistry over the years. Richard Harris played Professor Albus Dumbledore in the first two films, who's the headmaster in Hogwarts. He's perfect as well, he's like Dumbledore that we would imagine from the books. He originally turned down the role because he's aware of his illness, but his granddaughter persuaded him to take it. Alan Rickman played Professor Severus Snape, a potions master and head of Slytherin, he's perfect as well, 
And I don't know what else to say that hasn't been said already. The child actors were actually scared of him, which made him so good in this. Maggie Smith played Professor Minerva McGonagall, the Transfiguration teacher and head of Gryffindor. She's spot on with the role, and I love Robbie Coltrane as Rubius Hagrid, a half-giant and gamekeeper. Smith and Coltrane were J.K. Rowling's favourite choices for their role. Zoe Wanamaker played Madame Hooch, a flying teacher. John Cleese played Nearly Headless Nick, the ghost of Gryffindor House. He's also known as Sir Nicholas. Ian Hart played Professor Quirinus Quirrell, who teaches defence against dark arts, and has Voldemort's face attached to the back of his head, voiced by him, but physical appearance is played by Richard Bremer. Richard Griffith and Fiona Shaw played Vernon and Petunia Dursley, Harry's uncle and aunt. Harry Melling played Dudley, Harry's cousin. Warwick Davis played Professor Phileas Flitwick, a charms teacher, and he also played Gringotts' head teller and dubbed voice for Griphook as he's played by Vern Troyer. John Hurt played Mr. Ollivander, a guy who sells wands in Diagon Alley. Julie Walters played Molly Weasley, the mother of Ron, Ginny, Percy, Fred, George, Bill and Charlie. Bonnie Wright played Ginny Weasley, Ron's only sister and youngest out of all the Weasley kids. Chris Rankin played Percy Weasley, Ron's brother, who's a prefect. James and Oliver Phelps played friend George Weasley, Ron's older twin brothers. Tom Felton played Trico Malfoy as Slytherin and Harry's bully, who's got two friends, Vincent Crabbe and Gregory Goyle, played by Jamie Waylett and Joshua Herdman. David Bradley played Argus Filch, the caretaker. Matthew Lewis, Devin Murray, Alfred Enoch played Neville Longbottom, Seamus Finnegan and Dean Thomas, the Hogwarts students in the same year as Harry. Sean Biggerstaff played Oliver Woods, the Gryffindor Quidditch team keeper. The cast are perfect with their roles. The Hogwarts scenes were filmed in Anna Castle, which is not far from where I live, which is cool. And other Hogwarts scenes were filmed in Gloucester Cathedral. I love the opening of the film. The Hagrid breaking in was scary. Probably funny if they added this in. Sorry about that. Yeah, that would fit in with the response. <laughs> There's brilliant setup and introduction to the Wizarding World. They've got great deleted scenes and there's funny moments in the film. The bit where Seamus exploded in charms and the way Professor Flitwick responded. When God Leviosa. Well done, when dear. God... <laughs> really crackled me up. The troll looks a bit like Shrek with human ears, which is funny. I love the Quidditch scenes, the Fluffy and Voldemort are pretty scary in this movie. Especially when Voldemort breaks into the house and kills Lily and James. My god, that was terrifying. Gives you nightmares. We also have emotional moments where Harry sees his parents in the mirror. Professor Quirrell with Voldemort on back of his head looks pretty grim. Stop him! I thought Dumbledore eating earwax flavoured Bertie Bott's every flavoured beans was pretty amusing. John Williams' music score, effects and direction by Chris Columbus is well done. The differences from the book is some dialogues removed to prevent contradicting Order of the Phoenix. Peeves isn't in it, well technically he was, and played by Rick Mayall, but sadly the scene got cut. Harry and Trico first meeting at Rogue Shop and Midnight Jewel aren't in the film. The story of getting detention in the Forbidden Forest has changed and Quidditch has changed from traditional stadium to an open field circled by spectator towers. I really enjoyed the first film. The child actors did so well for their first time acting, and this is a brilliant setup for Wizarding World. I love this film a lot ever since I was little. Definitely recommend to give Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone there to watch, to those who haven't seen it. Actually, if you guys haven't seen it, go and watch those films. I guarantee you are going to love this film. But to those who have seen it, fantastic. So in the second installment to talk about is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. So in this movie it's about Harry's second year in Hogwarts where the house elf shows up, the hair of Slytherin opens the Chamber of Secrets and releases the monster that petrifies people in school. So Stuart Craig, the production designer, came back as he did the first film, designed the burrow based on Arthur Weasley's interest in muggles, building it out of architectural salvage. The flying cars created from 1962 Ford Anglia 105E and Dumbledore's office got designed as well and so is the Chamber of Secrets. 
The cast from the first film has returned for this movie. Sadly, this is Richard Harris's final portrayal as Dumbledore as he sadly passed away before the film got released. So we're looking at the new characters, starting with Kenneth Branagh, who played Professor Gilderoy Lockhart, a celebrity author who makes everyone believing he's a magical hero or something and teaches defense against dark arts. In this film, before he was casted, Hugh Grant was considered for the role but turned it down because of the commitments. Then Alan Cumin was next, but turned it down because of salary disputes. Mark Williams played Arthur Weasley, Molly's husband, and the father of Bill, Charlie, Percy, Fred, George, Ron, and Ginny. Jason Isaacs played Lucius Malfoy, the father of Draco Malfoy, who works at the Ministry of Magic and eventually becoming a Death Eater. Gemma Jones played Madame Poppy Pomfrey, who's a nurse in hospital wing. Christian Coulson played Tom Riddle, the 16-year-old Lord Voldemort, who framed Hagrid for opening the Chamber of Secrets. Before Christian was casted, Eddie Redmayne and Joseph Morgan auditioned for the role. Miriam McGuiles played Professor Pominar Sprout, who teaches herbology and head of Hufflepuff House. Hugh Mitchell played Colin Creevy, who's a fan of Harry and goes around taking pictures of everyone and everything he sees without permission. Shirley Henderson played Moaning Martel, the ghost who looks exactly like Harry, who was a student that got killed by Basilisk in the bathroom. Toby Jones played Dobby the house self who serves Malfoy's but later got freed. Robert Hardy played Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, and Julian Glover voiced Aragog, a giant talking spider whose friends with Hagrid got mistaken as a monster. The cast again are well done with their roles. I love the chemistry between Harry and Dobby. The flying car seems a blast to watch. <laughs> I love it the way Dudley says, I'll be waiting to open the door. And Dudley, you will be... I'll be waiting to open the door. Imagine talking like that as you entered someone's home. Can I come in, sir? <coughs> oh, oh. You'll more likely get an extreme answer, depending which person it is. And the stuff about Japanese golfer joke is pretty interesting. I highly recommend learning more about that. The Nocturne Alley looks pretty grim. The Cornish Pixies are fun and cute creatures. It was funny the way they pulled Neville's ears. My god, Malfoy is such a bully in this film. <laughs> Especially abusing Hermione. I love the mysteries going on. Who's the hair of Slytherin? Who opened the Chamber of Secrets? What monster is it? I love the backstories of how Hogwarts were founded. They should do that movie. Spider scenes were pretty intense. I love Ron's line in this. Can we panic now? The sound of voices writing on walls and people petrified is so scary. There's fantastic duel scenes and I thought the basilisk is pretty badass. The ending is an absolute joy. So yeah, I do love The Chamber of Secrets. It is my favourite Harry Potter film. It's the first Potter film I've seen in my life. And Chris Columbus's style really suits the franchise. John Williams again does a fantastic score, especially Spiders and Basilisk Battle. I can't believe it's actually almost three hours long. It felt like two hours, which I must have enjoyed it that much. So the next one coming is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> The story is Harry's third year in Hogwarts and someone called Sirius Black escaped from Azkaban and there's rumours about him being a Death Eater. So this film got released 18 months after Chamber of Secrets to give films each time that's required. Chris Columbus decided not to direct the film as he's barely seen his kids. However, he chose to produce it. Then he can spend more time with his kids. Guillermo del Toro was chosen to direct this film to make it Dickinson version, but he got put off by the first two films, as he found it too bright and happy and full of light. Mark Forster chose to direct Finding Netherlands over this film, saying he's not directing child actors again. M. Night Shyamalan was busy working on the Village movie, so Warner Bros. brought three options of directors, Callie Corey, Kenneth Branagh, Alfonso Cuarón, so it later went to Alfonso. He did hesitate at first because he hasn't read the books and seen the films, so Guillermo del Toro encouraged him to read the books, and well, he did and became the fan of the books, so Alfonso chose to direct it. J.K. Rowling loved his film, Why to Mama Tambien, and A Little Princess. David Heyman thought it was perfect fit with the tone and style. Alfonso wanted to make Hogwarts more contemporary and a little more naturalistic. 
and given the costumes and said more mature tone. So the scenes got filmed in Log Shi. These characters from the first two films made a return. Michael Gambon played Professor Albus Dumbledore from this film and the rest of Potter films, replacing Richard Harris. The actors were considered replacing him were Christopher Lee, but he turned it down for commitments. So it went to Ian McKellen, but he turned it down because it was too similar playing Gandalf in The Lord of the Rings. Richard Harris's family suggested Peter O'Toole, but the producers wouldn't have it because the concern of his age and health. Gary Oldman played Sirius Black, Harry's godfather, who escaped from Azkaban after being locked up for 12 years, being accused of betraying Harry's parents to Voldemort. Gary accepted the part for money as he hasn't taken on any major work for a few years and he's definitely one of my favourite characters from the Potter franchise. David Steelers played Remus Lupin, the teacher of defence against dark arts, a werewolf and a friend of Lily, James and Sirius and was Peter. David was originally going to play Professor Quirrell before it went to Ian Hart. He encouraged David to take the role as Lupin so he read part of the first book then the third one as he got the part and he's watched the first two films. Timothy Spall played Peter Pettigrew, a.k.a. Wormtail, who was a friend of Lily and James Potter, but he revealed that he betrayed them to Voldemort, and he wasn't killed. After the rumour spreading about Sirius killed him, the only thing that left was his finger. Emma Thompson played Professor Sybil Trelawney, who teaches divination. Warwick Davis was originally just playing the conductor for Hogwarts students doing the choir, but because Flitwick's absence of the script, that's what he ended up look like in the rest of the films. Marge is played by Pam Ferris. Not that Marge. There we go. Vernon's sister, who says nasty things about Harry's parents, which resulted her blowing up into Helian Bloon and flying away, which is a funny scene. Lee Ingleby played Stan Shunpike, the night bus conductor. Dawn French played the fat lady, a moving painting at Hogwarts, replaced Elizabeth Spriggs. There's great casting here. I love the night bus scene. It's a blast to watch. Take her away, Ian. Yeah, take it away, Ernie. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> and especially the decapitated, wisecracking Rastafarian air freshener, voiced by Lenny Henry. There's a lot of scary stuff in there, like the dog appearing, Sirius Black and the Dementors in the train. <laughs> First watching it as a kid, I actually got freaked out and fascinated by it at the same time. Harry riding on Buckbeak is a fun scene. <laughs> and you can see Buckbeak taking a poo. <laughs> Gross, it's pretty funny. I love the idea of Boggart where anything you're scared of pops up, then turn it into something funny. Neville's fear is Snape, Pavati is Giant Snake, Ron is Spider, Lupin is Moonlight and Harry is Dementor. This is also the first mention of Harry got his mother's eyes. The best Snape's line has got to be... Turn to page 394. Fantastic number to pick out out of all of them. Gotta love page 394. The Quidditch scene really gives me the chills with the cloud shape of the dog. I love the Marauders map, I always wanted one. Offer their compliments to Professor Snape and the request that he keep his abnormally large nose out of other people's business. Well, you insolent little professor. I also found out uh, in the scene where the students uses the sleeping bags at the Great Hall. Michael Gambon and Alan Rickman put the sound of fart in Daniel's bag, which made everyone laugh, which is really funny. I get the goosebumps when Sirius first showed up inside the Shrieking Shack. The Whomping Willow attacks looked pretty lethal as hell. I love the small talk between Harry and Sirius, I really love their chemistry. And there's a great idea with the time turning as well. The differences from the book is that Harry's parents' connection to Marauder's Map is briefly mentioned in the film. Sirius' backstory is cut and so is Snape's potion class. The romantic between Ron and Hermione and also Harry and Cho Chang. The bit where Harry says, I'm gonna kill him in the book, he said he's too stunned to move. I really enjoy Prison of Azkaban. The effects is great, the direction by Alfonso Cuarón, music by John Williams are fantastic. Next is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> Harry Potter 
Harry's fourth year in Hogwarts and chosen from Goblet of Fire for a Triwizard Tournament, along with Cedric Dickory, Victor Crumb and Flair Delica. So Chris Columbus got chosen to direct this film, but he didn't want to because he wants to spend more time with his kids, like a family, which is understandable. Alfonso Cuaron said he can only direct one Harry Potter film, so M. Night Shyamalan was originally going to direct the film, but he wanted to do The Life of Pi instead, so Mike Newell was chosen to direct the film. As the script began writing, David Heyman thought it was too long for one movie, said that they're going to shoot it as one and see how it ends up. If it's too long, then make it into two. Steve Close said they always thought it would be two movies, but they could never figure out a way to break it into two, so it will be different experience from the book. Chris Columbus advised those two to split into two movies, but Warner Bros weren't interested in doing that, so Mike Newell found a way to make it all into single film. He watched North by Northwest, The Parallax View, and Three Days of the Condor to prepare for the film. John Williams didn't return for the score, so instead, Patrick Doyle does the music, and there's great soundtracks. He has works with Mike in Into the West and Donnie Brasco. So in this film, these guys have returned. Ralph Fiennes plays Lord Voldemort, a dark wizard who's the leader of the Death Eaters, and he's the one who killed Lily and James Potter. Ralph found it difficult to play the evil character, so him and Mike Newell explored the character more. And the reason why he's cast is because he's capable of playing a realistic and frightening villain instead of a simple caricature, and he is terrifying, and my god, that character was terrifying. Brendan Gleeson played Alistair Mad-Eye Moody, who was an aura and a Defense Against Dark Arts teacher. Although, throughout this movie, Barty Crouch Jr. disguised himself as Mad-Eye Moody. The only time we see the real Mad-Eye is towards the end, where he's inside the chest. He was scary as well. Robert Pattinson played Cedric Diggory, Hogwarts champion. Stanislav Ianveski played Victor Crumb, a drumstrang champion and a star of Quidditch World Cup. Clemens Poesi played Fleur Delica, a Bo Batons champion. Katie Leon played Cho Chang, a Ravenclaw student and Harry's love interest, who's obsessed with Cedric Diggory. Roger Lloyd Pack played Barty Crouch Senior, who was the Minister of Magic and became in charge of Triwizard Tournament. David Tennant plays Barty Crouch Jr., Barty's son, who's a Death Eater. It's so cool, he's in it, and ironically, those two appeared in my favourite Doctor Who story together. Jeff Rawl played Amos Dickory, Cedric's father. Miranda Richardson plays Rita Skeeter, who writes for Daily Prophet. Predrag Bielic plays Igor Karkaroff, who was a Death Eater and became headmaster of Drumstrang. Francis de la Tour plays Madame Maxine, headmistress of Beau Batons. Chef Philly Chaudhry and Afshan Azad played Pavati and Padma Patil, the twins who Harry and Ron dated at the Yule Ball. Eric Sykes played Frank Bryce, the caretaker. John Hurd did return as Ollivander for this movie, but for some reason that scene got cut out. There's great casting. Here in the runway! <laughs> There's something you don't see every day. <laughs> The deleted scene where Hogwarts students seeing Hogwarts teach us something, please, was pretty catchy. Hogwarts, 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 Hogwarts teach us something, please, something, please. Pity that they deleted it. I think the dark mark effect on the sky looks pretty cool. I love the Quidditch World Cup. It was lucky that Cedric didn't break his leg after jumping off the tree. Works with me at the Ministry. Ah! That would be lethal if it was higher. I love the foreign students entrance. The unforgivable curses were great to explore. The bit where Mad Eye Moody turns Malfoy into Ferret was pretty funny. Uh, uh, oh, my father will hear about this. this is not a threat. Differences from the book are there's no privet drive, the Dursleys aren't in it. They had to remove Quidditch World Cup for the length of the film. Dobby isn't in it, and his character is replaced by Neville. There's no scene where Harry gives 1,000 galleons to friend George. Barty Crouch Jr. got sent back to Azkaban instead of killed off. 
There's no scene where Cornelius Fudge, disbelieving that Voldemort returns, which is saved for the next film, and the characters from the Goblet of Fire book aren't in the film are Bill Weasley, Charlie Weasley, Ludo Bagman, Winky, <coughs> sorry, Narcissa Malfoy, and Bertha Jorkins. I enjoyed this film as well. There's a lot of great stuff in there. <laughs> So, we're into the second half of the series. Coming up next is Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> Harry's fifth year in Hogwarts and the Ministry of Magic choose to deny that Voldemort has returned. So Mike Newell chose not to direct this film. Jean-Pierre Junet Guillermo del Toro, Matthew Vaughan and Mira Nair didn't want to direct this film, so David Yates got chosen to direct this film as they see him able to handle edgy and emotional film without a political backstory. Before he directed Harry Potter films, he did State of Play, Sex Traffic and The Girl in the Cafe, and he made films in the UK about politics without heavy themes. He got supported by David Heyman, Emma Watson said somehow it talks about life after 7th of July, the way people behave and when they're scared, the way truth is often denied of things their society has to face. Facing the fact that the authority is corrupted means having a non-conformist approach to reality and power. Well said. This is the only Potter film that Steve Close didn't do a screenplay, so instead it got taken over by Michael Goldenberg. Nicholas Hooper does the music and there's great soundtracks in this movie as well. We have these returning characters. Ivana Lynch played Luna Lovegood, a Ravenclaw student. Apparently there was over 15,000 girls waiting in line to get the part. C. Cher Ronan was considered too young, so Ivana won and she's fantastic. Timothy Spall didn't return as Wormtail because he was busy working on Enchanted, so the young version is played by Charles Hughes. Susie Shinner and Robbie Jarvis played young Lily and James Potter. James Walters and James Utekin played young Sirius Black and Remus Lupin. George Harris played Kingsley Shacklebolt, who is part of Order of the Phoenix and was an aura. Natalia Tenner played Nithadora Tonks, who is also part of the Order of the Phoenix and later married to Remus Lupin. Catherine Hunter played Mrs. Fig, the Dursley's neighbour, who was also a squib as well as Filch. Timothy Batson voiced the creature, the house elf, who served Sirius Black and his family. Tony Maudsley played Grob, Hagrid's half-brother. Emilda Staunton plays Professor Dolores Umbridge, who works at Ministry of Magic and became the Defence Against Dark Arts teacher, taking over the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. My god, what a nasty piece of work that character is! Emilda played it so well, she's a nice person in real life, but the character, oh, you really hate her. Bravo, Emilda, you should get a gold medal for that. Helena Bonham Carter played Bellatrix Lestrange, who's a Death Eater, and Sirius Black's cousin. What an evil character. Before Bonham Carter was casted, Elizabeth Hurley auditioned for the role, then Helen McCrory was considered for the role, but she couldn't take it as she was three months pregnant at the time but she later played Narcissa Malfoy. Jim McManus played Aberforth Dumbledore, Albus' brother, and a barman at Hogshead. Kenneth Branagh was going to return as Gilderoy Lockhart, but that got dropped for some reason. Tiana Benjamin was supposed to return as Angelina Johnson, the Quidditch captain, but she was too busy working on EastEnders. Again, there's fantastic casting here. We have a scary Dementor scene. No, no Dudley has become more horrible, the way he picked on Harry at the park, making fun of his parents and Cedric. Oh. <laughs> Is she dead? <laughs> Is she a dead oh. I love the broomstick flying scene in London. Absolute blast to watch. There's great sets with their headquarters, Room of Requirement, Ministry of Magic, Department of Mysteries and everything. Harry's dreams and Voldemort's vision was pretty scary. The bit where Arthur gets attacked seems pretty lethal. I enjoyed the duel scene in Room of Requirement. <laughs> and the fireworks. The battle scenes were a blast. 
The part where Sirius Black dies is so emotional, I literally couldn't take watching that scene. Daniel Radcliffe's scream had to be muted because it was too painful. It actually made Bonnie Wright, Emma Watson, Helena Bonham Carter cry. Bless him. There's fantastic acting there. And I love the chemistry between Harry and Sirius, that's the best part of the film. And I also like the Order of the Phoenix backstory. I thought it was interesting. The battle between Dumbledore and Voldemort is well done. Any differences from the book? Hell yeah, a lot. Dobby isn't in this film either. Neither are the Quidditch scenes, which disappointed Rupert as he was looking forward to it. Hermione blackmailing Ritter Skeeter isn't in the film. And there's no scene with Hospital seeing Lockhart return, as I've already mentioned. Order of the Phoenix is the longest part of the book and the second shortest film. Michael Goldenberg, as he was looking to cut down, he said the best equivalent way to tell the story. His job was to stay true to the spirit of the book rather than to the letter. J.K. Rowling told them to do what they have to do. She just wants to enjoy the film. There was a journey for Harry's emotions. Michael Goldenberg and David Yates looked for every opportunity to get everything they could in there and where they couldn't to sort of pay homage to it, to have it somewhere in the background or feel like it could be taking place off screen. Another part of the film I really enjoyed coming to sixth installment is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. <laughs> So in Harry's sixth year at Hogwarts, he falls in love and finds a memory that he could lead to uh, Voldemort's permanent death. Alfonso Cuaron said he'd love to direct this film, but for some reason he didn't. Mike Newell didn't get chosen to direct this film. Guillermo del Toro was chosen to direct it, but he decided to do Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, instead. And it was going to be Terry Gillum, but he said Warner Bros. had their chance the first time around, and they blew it. Oh dear. So David Yates got asked to direct this film while he's busy working on Order of the Phoenix. David described the Half-Blood Prince as a cross between the chills of Prisoner of Azkaban and the fantastical adventure of Goblet of Fire. David Heyman and David Yates took the inspiration from Half-Blood Prince to write the Deathly Hallows script. So we got these returning characters. Originally Emma Watson wasn't going to return as Hermione but she changed her mind as she couldn't see anyone else playing Hermione. Clayman's Poesy and Chris Rankin wanted to return as Fleur Delica and Percy Weasley, but they weren't in it for some reason. Christian Coulson wanted to return as young Tom Riddle, but David Yates thought he was too old as he was 30 at the time, so the actors were considered for the role were Jamie Campbell Boa and Thomas James Langley, but it went to Frank Delane. Jim Broadbent played Professor Horace Slughorn, a potion master who teached Hogwarts potions before, Snape is the Defence Against Dark Arts teacher. Slughorn has great relationship with Harry. Jesse Cave played Lavender Brown, Ron's love interest. Anna Schaffer plays Romilda Vane, who plans to give Harry a love potion because, well, he's the chosen one. Freddie Stromer plays Cormac McLaggen, who has a crush on Hermione, but the feelings isn't mutual. Rob Knox plays Marcus Belby, a Ravenclaw student. Sadly, the actor is no longer with us as he got impaled protecting his brother from the gang which is tragic. Ellen McCrory played Narcissa Malfoy, Draco's mum. I think Naomi Watts was considered for the role. I don't know. David Legano played Fenry Greyback, who's a werewolf, and again, there's fantastic casting here. There's fantastic opening with Death Eaters flying down to London, attacking muggles. The scene where Dumbledore uses his spell to fix Slughorn's house is pretty effective. I also found it amusing when Harry just landed in the water after being apparated. Is that now I heard? You haven't seen him, have you? Apparently he's wandering about the house. Really? 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 How much for this? Five galleons. How much for me? Five galleons. I'm your brother. Ten galleons. Gotta love the Weasley Wizards. Apparently, in the book, Hermione gets punched in the face by a boxing glove and get a black eye, but doesn't happen in the film. I think Harry and Luna's chemistry is pretty sweet. The romance between Harry and Ginny has handled well. The part that I found pretty scary was when Katie Bell got cursed, and that face, my god, that's pretty scary. There's great backstories exploring in the pensive. I love Snape's face in Hospital Wing after Ron finished with Lavender, it's pretty hysterical. We also have pretty emotional scenes like Aragog's death, Harry cast a spell on Trico which gave him cuts all over his body, Dumbledore drinking the potion. One more and then I promise. I promise I'll do what you say. I promise. The 
the cave scene was pretty scary and the most emotional scene has got to be Dumbledore's death. Man, that's heartbreaking. There's great setup for the Deathly Hallows. Any differences from the book? In the film there's no changing Minister of Magic scenes. Dursley's scenes are cut. The battle scenes of Hogwarts was also cut as they preferred to save it for Deathly Hallows. And they didn't think Dumbledore's funeral would have fit into the film. I enjoyed this film as well. We got the last part of film story to talk about, which are split into two parts. So we have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part one. <laughs> In this film, Harry goes on a quest to find all Horcruxes and destroy them all in order to kill Voldemort forever. Because of the length of Deathly Hallows book, Lionel Wigram, the executive producer, suggested split into two films. David Heyman didn't want that, J.K. Rowland agreed with splitting into two films. Alfonso Cuaron would have loved to return to direct, Guillermo del Toro would have loved to direct it, but The Hobbit ruled him out. Chris Columbus would love to return to direct it, but David Yates chose to direct it. He described part one as a road movie and part two as much more operatic, colourful and fantasy oriented a big opera with huge battles. These characters returned, Daniel Radcliffe said this is a road movie particular in part one of the film. People have been so used to seeing Harry Potter at Hogwarts and they're just not there for the first part of the film. That seems to have really freshened things up a bit. And hopefully we'll get people seeing the films with fresh eyes again. Because it's just a totally different look when you're not just sat in the same room the whole time. Warwick Davis played Grip Hook in the last two films. Domino Gleeson played Bill Weasley, Molly and Arthur's oldest son. And brother of Ron, Ginny, Fred, George, Percy and Charlie. In real life... His father is Brendan Gleeson, who played Mad-Eye Moody, which is cool. Risa Fans played Xenophilia Lovegood, Luna's dad. Bill Knight played Rufus Scriminger, a Minister of Magic who replaced Cornelius Fudge. Apparently he was in Half-Blood Prince, but the scene got cut, but at least he reprised the role in this film, because he's fantastic. Guy Henry played Pius Thickness, who was a Death Eater and became the Minister of Magic after Scriminger was killed. Peter Mullen played Carbon Yaxley, a Death Eater working at Ministry of Magic. Caroline Pickles played Charity Burbage, a Muggle teacher in Hogwarts who believes Muggles are no different to wizards and witches, which led to her death, killed by Voldemort and her corpse devoured by Nagini, the giant snake. David Ryle played Elpheus Dodge, an old friend of Dumbledore, and Andy Linden played Mundungus Fletcher, who was a thief, but got a locket taking off him as he was being threatened by Umbridge. Again, as well casting in the movie, I love the opening of the film, the Sky Battle is my favourite part of this movie, it's pretty epic. And I love the scenery. The running from Yaxley was pretty intense, the locket opening scene. Happy without you. Who could look at you? First Harry Potter. With all the oozing effects and Godric's hollow looks pretty grim. When I was a kid, the scenes I had to look away from was George's ear was bleeding and Ron being splinched. Yeah, it was pretty gross, and I'm kind of squeamish with when it comes to blood and gore. Nagini fight scene looks pretty lethal. I was freaked out by Harry's face in Malfoy Manor. It's so good to see Dobby making a return. The part where he dies was pretty emotional. I also found out the bits where Bellatrix is torturing Hermione, the way she screams. It made Daniel and Rupert fighting their way through to see if everything's okay as they're worried about Emma. I didn't take anything! I didn't believe it. <laughs> Which is a fantastic acting, and Voldemort picking up the Elder Wand from Dumbledore's grave made a fantastic cliffhanger. because the Dark Lord has the most powerful wand and it seems like a lot of sh** is going down. I also love the Deathly Hallows backstory, the part where Hermione, reading the book, showing the animation of Three Brothers, looked like it was directed by Tim Burton, which is cool, I love that. I always thought Death looks a bit like General Grievous from Star Wars. I absolutely loved Deathly Hallows Part 1, gave me goosebumps. The direction, effects and battle scenes is well done and I really love the music by Alexandra Desplat. I listen to them a lot. Now it's time to talk about the last one, which is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part two. The 
final Harry Potter film. The casts obviously reprised their role. Daniel Radcliffe said Voldemort does absolutely kick six bells out of him and that's make it effective. The fact that Harry's a kid having the crap beaten out of him if it's Voldemort killing an adult, well, he does that loads in the films. To see him brutalising and desperately trying to kill a 17 year old boy is hopefully going to shake some people up and David Yates wanted to bring many actors return for their roles as he could. I was mind blown when I saw Oliver Wood returned. Kiaran Hines played Aberforth Dumbledore in this movie. John Kay played Bogrod, a Gringotts goblin that Harry and Ron casted Imperio on. E.B. Beardsall played Ariana Dumbledore, Albus and Aberforth's sister. And they all begin with A's. Ellie Darcy Alden, Ariella Paradise, Benedict Clark, Alfie McIlwain and Rowan Godobed plays young Lily Potter, Petunia Dursley, Severus Snape, James Potter, and Sirius Black. As for the kids in 19 years later, Arthur Bowen, Will Dunn, and Daphne Bastigy played Albert Severus Potter, James Sirius Potter, and Lily Luna Potter, the children of Harry and Ginny. Ryan Turner and Helena Barlow played Hugo and Rose Granger Weasley, Ron and Hermione's children. Jade Gordon played Astorio Malfoy, Trico's wife. And Bertie Gilbert played Scorpius Malfoy, Trico and Astoria's son. The franchise does have a great casting here, they never got it wrong. I love the backstory that Grip Pook explained about the Sword of Gryffindor that Harry used to impale the Basilisk in Chamber of Secrets and Dumbledore's backstory as well. The Gringotts scene was a blast to watch. I love the dragon scene. Hogsmeade looked pretty grim. I enjoyed the battle scene between McGonagall and Snape. When I first saw that clip, I was mind blown. I really wasn't expecting to see that. Shield spell for Hogwarts is pretty cool. I love Neville's line after some of the Snatcher got dissolved away by Force Field. Yeah! You lose, aren't they? The fire scene in Room of Requirement is pretty effective and Paul Goyle died after he caused that spell. The battle scenes are fantastic, I love it, especially when Aberforth sent many Dementors away. There's also many emotional scenes like Death of Snape, Lavender, Lupin, Tonks and Fred, heartbreaking. The bit where Voldemort casted Avada Kedavra on Harry and ended up in the limbo. <laughs> In the book, he was naked in limbo, but in the movie, he got his clothes on to make it appropriate, I think. And I love the final battle between Harry and Voldemort. Yeah! Molly destroyed Bellatrix is pretty gangster. Not my daughter, you bitch! <laughs> That's for Alice and Frank Longbottom, that's for Sirius Black, and that's for Dobby. Voldemort's death scene is pretty effective. The bit where Harry snaps the Elder Wand and threw it away in the book, he used it to fix his old wand and then returned it to Dumbledore. And I think the 19 years later scene is a perfect ending of the franchise. <laughs> I love this film as well. I really love all eight Harry Potter films. It's always a joy to do a Harry Potter marathon. At least it gave us Fantastic Beast films. That's all the Harry Potter films. I enjoyed the books and games. Thanks for watching people and see you in the next video.